This is great. 250, 300 of my closest friends. Welcome. Thanks very much for being here. We couldn't do this without you. And uh, um, we have a very special program planned uh, this evening. So um, <clears throat> stay tuned and, uh, and pay attention. There'll be a test afterwards. So um, thank you, Dave. Um, thanks for uh, one more time emceeing. Um, we are uh, humbled to have everybody here and uh, um, <clears throat> honored with your support. We take that responsibility um, seriously and we promise to be wise stewards of your time and your treasure. I'm very fortunate to have the opportunity to share so many wonderful developments taking place here at Harrisburg University and throughout the capital region. We continue to provide unparalleled academic research and entrepreneurial experience. That entrepreneurial experience is a theme that you'll hear played through the evening tonight. We prepare students for the workforce to contribute one, at the moment they graduate, but then throughout their life, be prepared for a career, not just for a job. And some, here are some examples of some of the things that currently are going on at Harrisburg University. Again, you'll hear more about this, but the Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship, um, <clears throat> CIE, uh, which met, many of you may know it by, um, rather than its full name, um, this year we were uh, thrilled to be able to dedicate a physical space. The idea of a business incubator, accelerator, has always been part of the three-legged stool that was Harrisburg University, going back to early conversations with the mayor, um, that's Steve Reed, but some of us just simply referred to him as the mayor. So, um, <clears throat> But this year was the first year that we were um, able to realize a physical space for that incubator. Um, the CIE uh, does many things, but it certainly addresses economic disparity and the lack of diversity in entrepreneurship. The CIE supports underrepresented founders, including women and minorities. Some of them are with us here tonight by providing tailored resources, mentorship, and funding opportunities. The CIE is now incubating 19 companies, <clears throat> some of which are now receiving national and international attention. Time Magazine, as an example, um, named one of our CIE companies, Naki, uh, and their earbud uh, development as one of the top innovations in 2023. Think about that. And I have said, as I have said to others, much like you'll hear people in hushed tones say, I remember when I met Bill Gates, or I remember when I met you fill in the blank, uh, I think people will say, I remember when I met Dave, uh, the founder of Naki, um, Dave Siegel, and uh, in the same hushed tones, the, the technology that Naki is developing for, for um, <clears throat> empowering those with disabilities and empowering anybody really to interact with computers in a new and interesting and differentiated way will change the world we live in. Um, so we're thrilled to have Dave and Naki part of the CIE. A very different set of activities is taking place in York, uh, just down the road, um, where we are working with uh, the community foundations in York um, to put in place probably the highest tech greenhouse on the planet. Maybe not the biggest, because it'll be a rather small and, and modest sized greenhouse right in the center of the city of York. But one of the challenges with greenhouse operations is that you need a, a master grower, somebody that thinks like a tomato plant. And there are very few people out there in the world that think like tomato plants. It takes a long time. And, and uh, I've actually met a few when I went to the Netherlands. But, um, this is a greenhouse that takes the grower out of the equation and it lets the tomato plant itself guide what happens in the greenhouse. The, the, through sensors, through artificial intelligence and data mining, the plants tell the greenhouse, tell the HVAC systems, 
the pest management systems, the irrigation systems, what they need, when they need it, how they need it. So you let the plants actually automate and dictate what happens. Fascinating new technology. <clears throat> It'll change again the world that we, we live in with regard to food security, food safety, and providing fresh produce in our center cities. Um, all of that again is in uh, York, Pennsylvania. The last thing that I'd, I'd like to just touch on, and, and you heard a bit about this in our introduction, is deepening our relationship with UPMC. Uh, we, we thought many, many years ago about the relationship with UPMC and um, the importance of healthcare, and particularly UPMC to us here in the city of Harrisburg. Um, <clears throat> we're thrilled uh, to have the new leadership, um, Elizabeth Ritter and David Gibbons, I think they're here with us tonight, um, a part of uh, the current thinking and what we can do together. Uh, the nursing school that um, many of you have read about or are aware of that is operating in Strawberry Square, but also in our new building at, at 222 Chestnut Street, um, is now the largest nursing school uh, in the UPMC system. And we're thrilled, yes. I was at the uh, first graduation back in December um, for the new nurses, and I'm, I'm happy to report that all of the graduate graduates passed their nursing licensure exam, and over and over 80 percent of those graduates are employed with UPMC. A phenomenal story about changing workforce needs and educating those that take care of us and our health care needs here in the capital region. Um, it's, it's phenomenal. Beyond the nursing program, we continue to work with docs and the leaders of UPMC and the vendors that work with the docs to develop the new technologies, the new um, sensors that will change the way cardiac care happens um, or the way that pediatrics is um, uh, taken care of in the world we live in today. And through artificial uh, or AR and VR that we provide data analytics. Um, there will be simulation labs and training facilities on the latest technologies, again, right here in Harrisburg, that for many of these technologies, you have to currently, if you're a doctor in Central PA, fly to Florida or fly to Wisconsin to get the training. That's days out of an operating room. That's days away from patients. Um, we're going to provide that right here in Harrisburg. So those are just some of the amazing things that are going on right here in our region um, for Harrisburg University with our faculty and with our students. Again, thank you for sharing in our success and for joining us in this monumental event tonight. Um, we couldn't do this without any of you. Thanks very much.